think about this. Imagine if this is what you heard all day long, every day, it never stopped. Well, that was the life for one of our guests. Let's see her story. Two years ago, I woke up one morning to the room spinning. The room was going like this. Two or three months later, I started hearing my heart beating in my ear. My heartbeat would be like a drum. It was 24-7. One minute she'd be doing the dishes, and the next minute she'd be laying on the floor because she'd have a dizzy spell. I would hear my voice, and I'd be going like, like I was in a barrel. barrel. And when i go eat chips, anything crunchy would just really you know, sound through my, my head. head. The sound inside of my body was louder than the outside world. And it drove her crazy. I cried every day, depression set in. I stopped driving, I stopped eating. I stopped everyday life. There was no life. I suffered from this for nine months. When I would go to the doctors, no one could tell me it was wrong. And they looked at me like I was a crazy woman. The second ENT doctor told me about Dr. Yang. He walks in and he, he said, I know what you have. I was diagnosed with superior semicircular canal dehiscent. Carrie developed a hole between her inner ear and the brain. You can see right here, that little dot right there is the hole that caused her problem. Because of this hole, all the sounds of her body were excessively loud. Dr. Gokhan and Dr. Yang did the surgery and I woke up. The first thing I noticed was uh, I didn't hear that heart beating anymore or my voice echoing. It, it was it was the most awesome feeling. I mean, I actually cried. I'm a happy camper. I mean, I got life. My life's back. We're joined by Dr. Isaac Young, neurosurgeon from UCLA, along with his patient, Carrie. I want to thank you both so much for being here. And, you know, Carrie, we try to, to play everyday noises, body function noises for our audience. Did you all get a sense for what Carrie was going through? And each and every day to deal with that, how are you now? Um, I'm... Honey, almost 100% better. I say about 99% better. The heart beating, the sound of my voice echoing is totally gone. The pain, um, like any, you know, I used to hear my feet. Don't hear that anymore. And Dr. Yang, you can help me out here. I think it's her, her symptoms were all related to the fact that the structure being involved, the semicircular canals, are involved in a number of things, balance being one of them. So that those were some of the symptoms, but then the sound that she actually perceived were some of the other symptoms. Yeah, you know, this nerve here controls both hearing and your balance. And so some people have big time balance issues, but other patients have really mm -hmm. terrible symptoms, like hearing your own mm -hmm. eyeballs move, mm -hmm. hearing the own sound of your own voice, just echoing. I mean, for real. For your, real. Your, your eyeballs moving. Your, the, it, they, they describe it like a screeching, like like your nails down chalkboard each time your eyeballs move. Yeah, that would be maddening mm -hmm. after just a short amount of time. And, and let's clarify for our viewers just exactly what was going on. There was a hole, mm -hmm. the base of Kerry Skull, that was allowing this to happen. Can you, can you show us, you know, where this was and, and why this caused what it caused? Absolutely. So after you're born, the bones in your skull develop between your brain and your ear. In Kerry's case, this bone was really thin. And over time, this thin bone, it wore down into forming a hole between the brain and the ear. And on this CAT scan, uh, we show this half circle that shows exactly the connection between the brain and the ear. And so you have that open space, and so the sound travels through that hole into your ear. And each heartbeat, your brain pounds on that hole, and you hear the boom, 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 nonstop. It's easy to understand why you would get depressed, get suicidal thoughts, just literally go crazy because it never stops. You can't focus. What, did, what kind of things did you do to try and like block that out? Oh, lis listening to the TV, radio. Another white noise to. I even had the white noise machine and my doctor even told me to get between the little, you know, the static between the radio, nothing. It was just that overpowering. I mean, just if I was, if it was doing it right now, I wouldn't be understanding what you would be saying right now because it was so loud. So you made the diagnosis, how did you fix it? What we do is, we do brain surgery, kind of like this. 
And we so it's probably not as easy as just, yeah, right. you just take half off and there's the brain. It's a little more involved probably. A little more blood. It's a really involved. delicate region. And what we do is we, we have to lift the brain off the floor of the skull. And so we lift the brain off the floor of the skull. And then right here. <laughs> a little more gentle. With the We're a little brain. more gentle. And then right here is where the hole will be between the brain and the ear. Right there. And so this brain surgery is what we do to lift the brain off that spot. And that's really the difficult part, is lifting the brain off that spot. And then we take a small piece of your chewing muscle, which is right here. You can feel it. And then we take that and we plug the hole, and we hold it in place with a little bit of glue. So you basically cover the hole, and Carrie wakes up from the operation. She's awake or asleep? Or anything? She's asleep. She's asleep. Okay. And if it works, resolution. That's right. Mm. Woke when up. you woke up, was, was that the best feeling you've ever had? Absolutely. Um, no heart beating. My voice was not echoing. Um, I heard all those wonder, wonderful beepings of the machines. I can mm. actually hear what the nurses were saying. It was, it was awesome. I mean, oh, that was actually yeah, the best thing in my life. And, and Dr. Yang, I think you've come up with something to give, give us, the audience, viewers, an idea of what Carrie was was experiencing. We're gonna pretend this here is the ear canal. And the inside of here, we put in a microphone to simulate the heart sounds that Carrie was hearing. And this hole here represents her disease, the hole between the brain and the ear. And we're gonna put that in here. And this bigger box represents her skull. And so this is what she heard with that hole open. And we're gonna play that. Good. And that's what she heard all day, nonstop. Boom, boom, boom. And so she couldn't live her life. She couldn't live her life at all because that was driving, just making her life unbearable. And so what we did was simple. It was just brain surgery. And we just... <laughs> <laughs> simple. simple. Surgery. Easy. No Easy problem. for him to say. <laughs> and we covered the hole. And once we covered the hole, that sounds a lot better. Oh, and, yeah. and are you, there. you know, I, I think a lot of us probably have laid on our pillow at night and you hear your, you hear your heart mm -hmm. beating. So some people have had a much lesser experience with this. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, are, do you still hear some of the noises or is it pretty much gone? It's gone. Wow. That's great. <clears throat> that is phenomenal. I think a classic example, one of the things I said earlier in the show is that a lot of people might be living with this and not even know it. I think this is a great example of if this is something that you're dealing with, discuss it with your doctor. Talk about what options might be out there because this is truly life-changing, maybe even life-saving. Well, Carrie, so glad you're doing well. Best of luck in the future. Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much.